I'm going to give the message, so this would be the second message on our series of messages about the effect of salvation. I'm going to show to you how this passage becomes true. There are two testimony that I'm going to look at. The first testimony is a testimony of Francis of Assisi. Maybe you heard of this name. He was wealthy, well born, and a high spirited. He was unhappy, feeling that his life was incomplete. One day, while riding on his horse, he met a leper. Disgusting in the ugliness of his disease. On an instinct, Francis Assisi get down and threw his arms about the leper. Behold, in his arms, the face of the leper changed into the face of Christ. Francis' life was never the same anymore. Martin of Tours was a Roman soldier, the captain of the Roman soldiers in a Christian. On a cold winter day, as he, as he entered on a city, a beggar stopped him and asked for money. Martin had no money. Seeing the beggar, no blue and shivering from the cold, he, he took off his ragged soldier's coat, cut it into two, and gave half of it to the beggar. That night in a dream, Martin looked into the heaven when Jesus stood amidst of all the angels. Jesus was wearing half of the Roman soldier's coat. Doing good work is a nature. It is a characteristic, it is a disposition of every Christian after believing and receiving him as a personal Lord and Savior. Good work, it is our life. Please open your Bible with me in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. But allow me to give you a little bit background of the book of Ephesians. Now, the book of Ephesians is one of the personal epistles. Now, the book was written when Paul was in prison at Rome at around AD 61 to 62. He wrote this book for the purpose to inform that all believers, Jews and Gentiles, are one in Christ. <coughs> this oneness was to be demonstrated by their love for one another. Paul used the noun or verb form of love, agape, 19 times in the book of Ephesians. Paul started with love and he ended love. The text we're going to look at in chapter 2 of Ephesians Chapter 2, verse 9, this is after they have experienced the love of God, now they are going to share the love of God by doing good works. In, verse, in verses 8 to 9, it explained to us that salvation is not the result of our own effort. It is not the result of good works, so that no one can boast. It is not it is not faith plus good work equals salvation. It is faith in Jesus Christ plus salvation equals what? Good works. Good works is just a fruit. Salvation is the root. It is not faith that produces. Uh, sorry, let me paraphrase. Now in verse 10, after we believe in Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, we are now reborn and have a different perspective in life. The first point I'd like to share with you is we're God's workmanship. I want you to look at your Bible with me. So you are now in chapter 2, right? Verse 10. 
Now Paul explained the efficient Christians, they have their own nature to whom they're working with. Now, if you look at, I want you to look at also in verses 1 to 3 in chapter 2. So now, the efficient, they're also a workmanship before they become a Christian. What kind of workmanship whom they are working with? Look at verses 1 to 3. What did you see there? The Ephesians believe and follow the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Now the word here, follow, it implies that they take order from whom? From the ruler of the kingdom of the air, that is Satan himself. So if you look at in verses 1 to 3, Satan is also making his own workmanship. But we're going to look at now. So, so the person before they became a Christian, before the before a person become a Christian, he is Satan is trying to use him as his workmanship. So this is what it happened. But after verses one to three, you're going to look at there in verses eight to nine. What had happened here? As I mentioned to you that you know here we're going to look at that the Satan is trying to mold also try to make somebody who becomes or who will be his workmanship. So that person, how Satan mold that person? By what? By fulfilling, by satisfying the cravings of our sinful nature in following his design and thoughts. But upon receiving Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, there is a change of boss. There is a change of Lord. There is a change of nature. There is a change of orders. So now, when the person, if you look at the verses 1 to 3, the person is following instruction to whom? To Satan himself. But after the person who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, now that person is following. Where? Or to whom? From Jesus Christ. I want you to look at verse 10 here. In verse 10, the word workmanship in Greek word is poema. From which we get our English word what? Poem. It means something that is carefully crafted or constructed by God's own hands in the entire Bible. There were only two, and there are only two passages that they mentioned the word poema. That is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, as well as in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. If you look at here, Paul is so careful in using the word here poema. Because the word poema it doesn't refer to the original physical creation. But the word in poema, it referred to our spiritual recreation in Christ. Do you get me now? So when the person, so let me get you here on the process. In Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9, the person is saved by grace through faith. After that person has been saved, he becomes now the new creation. He becomes now the new poema. It means that that person now is not the same anymore. He has been changed by Jesus Christ. If you look at the second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, what it says there? If anyone is in Christ, what? He is a new creation. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, it tells us to put on the new of the new man. Let me give you, I don't know, maybe you don't have sleep last night, you become so silent today. Let me give you a, a joke here so that you will smile a little bit. There were two friends, they're bragging each other, who has the oldest collection. And now, uh, Sam, difficult, his name is Sam, and he is talking to his best friend, he was saying, you know what, my dad has 
a Washington sword and a Lincoln's pen. Oh, wow. His friend said, oh, you know what? Mine is the oldest collection. So what your dad have? Oh, my father has an Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, maybe, we don't get the old collection in our, Christian, in our old self. We let all those old collections that we have to let go. Because we're going to have a new life. When you enter into, your, into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you should live all, your old self because you're entering into a new self. As you enter into that new self, you're going to acquire the good work. The second point I'd like to share with you is we are created in Christ to what? To do good work. Now I want you to take, to take note here the phrase in Christ Jesus. If you own the Bible that you're holding on, I want you to circle the word there I am. am. In English, a part of the speech, we call this a preposition. What does it mean? It is a word that help to express the relationship between two or more words in a phrase or sentence. So I'm going to show you here the relationship, what he said, in Christ Jesus. So there, there is a word there, I am, because when we do good work, it always have a connection to who? To Jesus Christ. We don't do good work because of my son, because of somebody. We always do good work, the I am there, the connection is in Jesus Christ. What is good work? But sometimes we would say that good work is what? Doing charity, words of kindness and benevolence, words of gladness, being generous to those who are in it. That's good words, right? But based in our text, this is good words. But based in our text, if we will do this, this must be what? Be done in Christ Jesus. We don't do good works because of our own benefit, for our own agenda. Sometimes we love to do good works, especially those people you think they could be paid. But in the Bible, we should be doing good works for those people who cannot repay us. That's good works. So anyway, if you want to help somebody, but as you will help that person, you are, you are taking something that one of this that you could buy money for that person. That's not a good work. Because good work is always be done by the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me illustrate here. Okay, I want you to think, uh, usually the doctors, they are going to use the gloves as they will do the operation. With the gloves, you'll be able to see, it's just like us. We're the gloves of Jesus Christ. But inside there is a hand that has these hands would help as the doctor would operate. Maybe the, the patient will be able to feel the gloves. But in reality, there is something on the gloves, it is the hands of the doctor. You and me, my friend, is just like we're just like a glove. Inside of that, it is the hands of God. We are just hands and feet of that. So when when, uh, when God asks us to do something when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, to do good works, it's not us. We could we could not boast that we do good things because we are just a glass of God. We are just His instrument. We do good works because this is what our life, this is our new nature after we receive the salvation by grace through faith. Let me quote here what Charles Spurgeon says. I don't know if you could see this, but it says, Where there are no good works, what there is no indwelling of the Spirit of God. The faith 
which does not produce good works, what? Is not saving faith. It is not faith of God's elect. It is not faith at all in the scriptural sense. When Christians did not perform good works, there must be something wrong with your faith. Our salvation should produce its fruit, our good works, it is by product of our salvation. The second point I would like to share with you is we are to advance his words through good works. If you look at the last part of verse 10, in, in the last part of verse 10, you're going to see which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now I want you to look at here the place prepared in advance. In Greek word, it is poikonazo, no, which means to prepare a previous time. Now, before God created us in Christ, by conversion, He had disdained these good works and made them ready for our disposal to fulfill His purpose. God has prepared us to do good works before the, cre before the new creation in Christ. How God prepared us? Before we became a Christian, He has gifted us, He has given us talents, He has given us spiritual gifts, He has given us, I would say, resources so that we will be able to do good works. The gifts that we have, the talents, the skills that we have, God has gifted you, God has equipped you so that when you become a Christian, you will be able to do the good works that God has intended for us. And I would say, even your own money is not even yours. <laughs> sometimes God has blessed us in order to bless somebody. When we suppress that money, I could remember one of the prophets in the Bible when, when all those uh, pieces man, when God was, when Jesus Christ asked them to throw their net, and they throw the net on the right side, when their, when their boat is filled with, uh, when their net is filled with fish, you need to call the other boat, or else they're going to sink. There are lots of Christians out there. They were sink with so many material things. Because the material things that we have, we just become an instrument to share it with somebody. So his final purpose was, was to make good ones the very element of our life. The domain in which our action should move. It should be the nature of our daily of our daily walk with Him to do good works as the hands and feet of God to show His love to those who need Him. Maybe those people to say that they don't see God. Maybe maybe the people are surround them who surround Him or her. Not doing good works. That's why that person, he don't think that God exists. And that's why wherever God has planted you, wherever God has put you, we need to do good works. Let me give you here another joke, maybe something a little bit more sleepy. Okay. So the doctor said, this is a conversation between a doctor and a patient. And the doctor said, I have some good news and some bad news. Which do you want to hear first? The patient said, give me the bad news. The doctor said, we amputated the wrong leg. <laughs> That's so bad. To talk with uh, one of our church attendees here and I asked him, how was your work? And he said, you know what Pastor Bong, I have been laid up on my work three weeks ago. And at this moment, I applied for employment insurance or EI. But it's just so hard to get the EI now. And in spite of my longer service, they only give me seven months. And they give me not even months. I could not have been paid my more days. Why do, I take, why do I tell you this? We need to do good works because what? Before this, our circumstances here, it will go deeper and deeper. 
you will see people who need good works. As we will do good works, we will be able to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. As I mentioned to you, I can see that there is opening to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ because of our province is facing financially. I talked to Pastor Mike, he was saying, he, he was, Pastor Mike is a, a youth pastor with our youth and then he is doing the book ministry in downtown and he mentioned the last time before the economic crisis there were only 250 people whom they fed almost every meal but now they have 900 people they fed every meal and there are lots of people in the The needs of our parents to do good works it is a mess. I believe wherever you are, you could see not just the Filipinos, other nationalities, they are in it. How could we apply the truth that we have today? Before we could apply, because we could do our good work, there's something that we need to change the way we understand good work. And first, we should not look at good work as an opportunity but as a calling. The first hindrance is that we could that we could not excel in doing good because we look at doing good, doing good work as an opportunity, given the opportunity, then we will perform good work. So we will start be waiting and waiting when the opportunity comes and when the opportunity comes, we're going to do good work. But I tell you, my friend, opportunity will never come. So what will happen now, we are thinking to do good work when opportunity comes, but opportunity doesn't come. When we look at doing good work as a calling, we will always, we will always find something, we will always create something, we will always seek in order we can do good works for those who need it. Second. We need to look at good work not as an event, but a relational. If we look at good work as an event, then we could just wait for a certain time, and then when time comes, we will do the good works. And after the good, after that certain event, or after, then we need to wait for another event to do something good. We should look at. Doing good works as a relational, that as we do good work, we could be able to establish to those people who need help, and then later on, we could be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So don't look at good work as an event. Because sometimes we don't have event. And third, we need to look at good work not as something to do, but the lifestyle in Christ. If we look at good work as something that we could do, time will come that doing good becomes a burden to us. It becomes hard for us to do. But if we look at good work as our lifestyle, that this is should I this is should I should live because I am a child of God and being a child of God it is my nature it is my characteristic it is my disposition to do good work and last one we should not look at good work as an optional but a disposition in life if we look at good work as an optional Given a chance, if I could have the time, then I'm going to do good work. If I have money, then I'm going to do good work. Now, if I have the talent that I have, I'm going to do good work. My friend, doing good work is not optional. It is the lifestyle of every Christian who believes in the symbol of Jesus Christ. Because good works, it is the fruits of being saved. My friend, when we do good work, we always do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Because sometimes in spite you do good works, you know sometimes the response of the people is not good. In spite of the good works 
You try to help somebody, but they will be angry at you, or they will talk against you. It is not your job to respond to those kind of people. Your job is to do good works. Now, how can we picture out the message of God this afternoon that He has put in our heart? It, it given the, the idea of, of how to picture out the message that God wants us to tell us this afternoon. Now, let me show to you here. Now, a video that you'll be able to see that being Christian from old self going to new life, there must be a change. Can you show us the video, please? I'm showing this video to so be able to understand how the, the third pillar changed into butterfly. Because I want you to understand before the third pillar turned into butterfly, he has his own nature. He has his own characteristic. He has his own instinct. He has his own disposition as a third pillar. When he turned into butterfly, he has left his old nature as a caterpillar. He left his own characteristic, he left his old, his old instinct, he left his old disposition in acquiring the new nature as a new caterpillar. 
People who have been saved by grace through faith. We have our own nature. We have our own characteristic. We are selfish. We are self-centered. We allow the pleasure of our own flesh. That's our caterpillar. But when a person believed and received the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, there is a change. Is it possible that if I am a caterpillar, if I am a butterfly, I could have the characteristic of caterpillar? No, you can't. The caterpillar he needs to school. The butterfly, what is characteristic, he needs to fly. Now sometimes when we become a Christian, we try to go in, going back and start calling rather than God. When we believe Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we have acquired new nature. We have acquired new characteristic, new disposition. We have now the new life in Christ. We let go of our self-centeredness. We let go of all the spirit that we have. We learn to sacrifice for the good of others. We learn how to do good things for those people who could not repay us. That's our new nature in Christ. Salvation and doing good works are like the chemical ingredients of salt, which is composed of two poisons of two poisons, sodium and chlorine. If we ingest it, either of the two it is poisonous. It will cause us to die. But if the two combine them properly, we have the sodium chloride, which is the common stable salt that gives flavor to our food and indeed life and health, health to our bodies. My friend, salvation without good works is so dangerous. Salvation without good works, it destroys and even kills the advancement of God's kingdom. It kills the advancement of the work of Jesus Christ. Salvation that follows good works, it gives us beauty. It's just like a salt, it preserves, it gives us faith in our Christian life. Therefore, I appeal to you for those who believe. And this is Jesus Christ as your person, Lord, in Savior. It is not an option for a Christian to do good works because that's who we are. Wherever God has planted you, maybe there are people who don't believe Jesus Christ. But as you will do your good work, you are actually advancing the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. For allowing us, Lord, to reflect in your word that you have created us to do good works. And Father, we thank you that good works is the result of the salvation that we have. Father, thank you for your word. And it is my prayer, Lord, that here in the house of Prayer Alliance Church, that wherever we are, whatever responsibilities that we have, from Monday to, to Monday, Lord, I pray that we will be able to do good works, that those people around us who don't believe in Jesus Christ, they will be able to know you who you are. Father, thank you for speaking to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.